As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way. The congregation of the one-room church sung in unison, except for the one that never sang. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. Each time this was sung, the elderly woman standing next to Samuel would place a hand on his shoulder. Samuel knew his mother wanted him to repent. Samuel never would. The preacher, the new one, walks up behind the podium behind the altar. He closes his eyes and speaks. Please continue to hum the melody of this perfect hymn. Glory to God and soothes the soul. The congregation continued to hum the melody of the song as the preacher continued. Brothers and sisters, are you tired? Are you soul sick? Have you strayed from the path to heaven? Come lay your brethren at God's feet. Allow him to lighten your load, for God loves his children and doesn't want you to suffer needlessly. Random people stood and walked to the altar. They kneeled at the altar and started to pray. Under the humming, the preacher could be heard as he put a hand on the shoulder of the people praying. Bless you, brother. Bless you, sister. The hand on Sam's tightened. Sam put a hand on his mouth and squeezed lightly in a strong but respectful way of saying, No. The preacher stood behind the podium and called more to prayer. While he did so, memories flooded Sam's mind. God's love is all-encompassing and eternal. Such screaming as he was torn apart. For his love is warm and caring. The long talons of the Wendigo as they're sticking in the cabin and searching. He protects us, guides us. Jeb laying on the bed. Sweat and tears, pain rolling down his face. Accept his love, for it is forever. Jeb looks at Sam. His eyes are black, filled with malevolence and hunger. For I am the shadow of death. Amen. Oh, Preacher smiles and addresses the congregation. Thank you for coming. Remember, next week is homecoming. After service, we will have an afternoon of fellowship while we eat. Please invite any family members and friends. And have a blessed day. The congregation starts leaving the church. Sam holds out an arm for his mother as they near the door. The preacher puts a hand on Sam's shoulder. Pardon me, Samuel. May I have a moment? No, uh, have a good day. Samuel, that wasn't nice, his mother admonished. It's sorry, Ma. Let's get you home. I believe you promised fried chicken for dinner. Why, yes. <laughs> yes, I did. On the way home, Sam stopped at the feed store. Thruston Wilson, the town's local entrepreneur, approached Sam. Afternoon. Afternoon. A good day, isn't it? Sam put the last bag of feed on the back of his wagon. The feed store was closed today, but Sam made arrangements with the proprietor to pick up the feed after church. What do you want? Have you spoken to Father Doolin yet? No. The businessman shuffled his feet uneasily. Really? He was supposed to talk to you. Well, I didn't want to talk to him. Sam climbed on the wagon and prodded his horses by making clicking noises with his mouth. Yeah. He tips his hat to thrust him. Have a nice day, Mr. Wilson. Later that day, Sam's sitting on the porch with his mother. She was patching up some clothes while Sam whittled. It's Sunday, the Lord's Day. Day of rest. Only necessary things like patchwork and feeding the livestock was done. As he whittled, Sam saw a group of men crest the hill and head towards the homestead surrounded by many wildflowers. Sam turns to his mother. Mo, go inside. His mother looked up, seeing the men. Oh, Sam, we have visitors. So I'm asking you to go inside. Samuel, I'm sure it's just neighbors calling on us, wanting to visit for a spell. Or not. I'm fixing to find out. Now please, step inside until I do. His mother sighed as she got up. She kissed Sam on the cheek before going inside. As you wish, son. I'll make some coffee just in case. Alright, thank you. 
When his mother was safely inside, Sam got up and walked towards the man riding towards him. Hello, he called out. Hello, Sam, the voice called out. Son of a bitch, Sam thought. It was the preacher. He took over the church when Jeb died. He wasn't as good as his brother, but ultimately, he didn't care either way. Now why are you here? Sam asked the men as they stopped in front of him. Some of the men dismounted. He was the preacher, Sheriff Talmadge, and Mr. Thompson. To Sam's surprise, there was Bob Mitchell, who was currently in the custody of the local jail. Sam had heard of him, and he was a criminal. Even more to Sam's surprise was the fact that Noah was there. Noah and his mother were Sam's neighbors down yonder, and... A while back, Noah's pa went to do some work on a riverboat and died. It's been just the two of them ever since. His mother, Colleen, definitely did not know that he was here. In the back, there were other men, about five of them. Sam didn't know their names and why they were there. The sheriff approached Sam. Hello, Sam. Don't want to be a bother, but we have a hard-pressed situation. About what? Sam started to tense up. This was starting to feel like a lynch mob. The sheriff looked around. We need your help. With what? Now the preacher stepped forward, his voice filled with nervousness. There, there's something in the hills. Uh, we all know you had experience in this matter. We, well, we all heard the stories about what, what had happened up there. They, they stopped when you came back. That is till now. It all became clear in Sam's mind why they were here. I take it the stories have started again. Yes, worse than before, Sheriff answered. So, why are you all going up there? Preacher smiled. With God's blessing and your help, no. If you go, none of you will make it back. That sounds like you're yellow, one of the men in the back said. Not if you knew what you were dealing with. All of you will die. Screaming. Sheriff's tone became stern. Now, listen, Sam. Now, we, we had enough firearms to deal with what's up there. We could use your help. Put all the cards on the table. You were you have a warrant, Sam. Come with us. I'll make them all go away. If not, I'll arrest you when we get back. Fine. I'll stay. You won't come back, so those threats are empty. Sam could tell his words angered the sheriff and the strange men in the back. He didn't care. Sam looked at Noah. Come here, boy. Noah got off his horse and walked forward. Yes, sir? What the hell are you doing? I know your mama don't know you're here. Noah's face turned red. To his credit, he didn't back off. He kept looking Sam in the eye. I'm the man in the house now. I, I gotta protect my ma and home. This is what I aim to do. You can be the man of the house by staying here and taking care of your ma. By going off getting yourself killed. Going, Sam. Once the words came out of his mouth, Sam backhanded him and grabbed the front of his shirt and pulled him in. Get on your goddamn horse and go home, Sam whispered. Several men tried to approach, but Sam pulled out his revolver and pointed it at them without taking his eyes off Noah. One more step and I'll add to my body count. The men stepped back and Sam spoke to Noah. Go home. You hear? Yes, sir. Good. Sam let go, and Noah mounted his horse and rode home. Now Sam looks at the man with a gun still aimed at them. How dare you bring a boy to something like this? The sheriff shifted his weight on the saddle. He volunteered. He's of age. He'd be taken advantage of by men like you. All you piece of shit. Get off my land. Sam says, putting down his gun. One of the strange men coolly looked at Sam. They can shoot us all? It's going to be my first time in the situation, and I'm still standing. The man goes to draw his gun, and the sky fills with a thunder from Sam's revolver. The back of the man's head explodes, and his body falls backwards off the horse. The hell, Sam? I'm placing you under arrest, the sheriff screamed. Sam pointed his gun at him. You can try. You'll die while you attempt it. Get off my property. The men grabbed the body and put it on the horse. And they all mounted their horses, each looking at Sam in anger, before he turns his horse around and the sheriff says, You know, when this is over, I'm coming to arrest you for murder. You drew on me first. You know that. Besides, 
We'll never see each other again. The sheriff scoffs and leaves. Leaving Sam alone with a pool of blood in front of him. Sometime later, almost dusk, Sam was helping his ma clean up for dinner. Now tomorrow, I'm going to fix the fence on the north side. That's good, his ma said. Sam could tell something was wrong and bothering her. Sam had a good idea what it was. No, I, I had no choice. He drew on me first. It's always a choice, Samuel. That's true. That's true. But if the choice is living or dying, I'll choose living every time. Not by killing. Sam stops and looks at his mother. That's not how it works most of the time in the world. You would have killed me, possibly done something to you. No, the sheriff would have protected me. That coward just looked as he pulled. That's no way to talk about the lawman that's been chosen to protect us. What you did today wasn't on the path of God. Sam slammed the cast iron skillet on the wood wooden stove. I'm not Jim. I, could, I couldn't be him if I tried. You don't have to be him. You just walk the path. Sam turned, looked at his mother. I think that was the first man I killed. You straight. Gotten into trouble, that's all. No, Ma. I, I've done more than just get into trouble. I, I killed many men. I shot them, stabbed them, strangled them, beat them until they stopped screaming and laid motionless. Tears welled up in his Ma's eyes. It's not true, son. It is true. Done all that while these men were trying to kill me. I, I'm not a good man. My soul's covered in scars that tell a, a tale of wickedness and, and wrath. And I, I, I can't be Jeb if I tried. His mom put a hand on the side of his face. What happened to my baby boy? Before Sam could answer, there was a knock at the door. Sam walked over and opened it with a hand on his gun. Standing in front of him was Colleen, Noah's mother. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Sam, but have you seen Noah? Earlier. I sent him home to you. Come on in. Colleen walked in and sat down. Sam's ma started making coffee. Why was he here? A bunch of fools are heading to the hills. Heard stories and think they can go do something about it. Lord, no. Colleen stands up. I have to find him. Sam put his hand on her shoulder. I'll find him. You don't even know where to look. I do. I'll find him. I'll bring him back here. Colleen's yellow ringed brown eyes started to well up. I can't lose him. You won't. Stay here with Ma. We'll be back soon. Thank you. Sam nodded and headed outside. He stops at one of the windows and takes a look. Inside, his Ma puts down a cup in front of Colleen as she puts her head in her hands and starts to cry. Ma put an arm around her shoulder to comfort her. Sam steals himself and walks to the barn. It doesn't take long for him to saddle his horse. As he leads the horse out, he sees a hatchet sticking in the stump. He takes it Puts it in his gun belt. Doesn't have enough bullets to protect himself. So any little thing will help. It's better than nothing. He thinks as he climbs up on his horse and heads towards the foothills as the last of the sun dips below the horizon. It was some time before Sam found the group. Unbelievably, they had set up camp. It was the laughter and talking he first heard. It's all they are. They're gonna die from their ignorance, Sam thought. He kept walking until he reached the edge of the small clearing. No, Sam simply said. Everyone felt silent. Noah's face went red. Come on now. The Ma's worried about you. The sheriff looked at Sam. He's fine. Tell Colleen he'll be back in a couple of days. And he's going back now. I'm staying. You ain't my daddy. Boy, Sam replies as he stepped forward. He stopped when a gun is placed on his head. You killed my cousin. You killed my cousin, now you die. The hell with the both of you. The preacher stands up with his hands out. Now hold on. Let there be no killing tonight. I don't answer to you, father, the man said. No, but you will answer to God in the end. Sam has information we need. You kill him, it will be none the wiser. After a moment, Sam hears the cock of the gun being pulled back and the man saying, talk, then you die. The preacher pleads. Please, Sam, what happened up here? Sam takes a deep breath. All right. I'll tell you. Everyone holds still. All of them looking at Sam as he starts to talk. All of you know how bad last winter was. It was colder with more snow. My partner and I got into a spot of trouble. Came up here to, to wait it out. 
And Ma was worried about Jeb. Came up here to check on his his parishioners or give him some supplies. Another storm hit while he was up here and trapped him. The man with the gun pushes Sam's head forward with the barrel. Speed it up! Sam slightly turned his head and glared at the man. I came up here to get him on Ma's behest. Me and Dutch found him by accident. He was kneeling in the snow, praying to God to kill him. In the distance, there was a sound right out of hell. We grabbed my brother, made our way to the cabin nearby. What made the sound? No asked. The evil. Pure ravenous evil. Indians believe there's a curse upon this land. Eating human flesh is the highest sin in their culture. If the curse is on the land, one that eats the flesh becomes something else called a called a windigo. One of the strange men stands up. What a bunch of horse shit! He says as he walks to the tree to pass water. Believe what you want, Sam replies. The man grunts and shakes his head. As the piss hits the tree, the night becomes filled with a screech, like nails on glass. Something from above falls and tackles the man. In the firelight, Sam saw the tallow skin and knew they had to run out of time. His worst fear had come true. As the creature tore the man apart, Sam spun around and pulls out his hatchet and swings. The blade opens the throat of the man behind him. Blood sprays out and covers Sam on his head and shoulders. And before he could fall, Sam grabs the man and throws him towards the creature. He then turns and screams over the thunder of gunfire. Noah! Sitting on a rock in complete shock was Noah. Sam's scream snaps him out of it. Noah shakes his head and runs behind the group of men, firing at the window towards Sam. Go! Sam screams as he grabs Noah by the shoulder and pushes him forward. They run down the hillside, dodging trees and trying not to fall. They reach the large stream flowing downhill. In fact, Sam was still wet from the last time he crossed. Noah stopped. His breath is ragged and fast. Don't stop. We need to keep going. In between breaths, Noah speaks. I can't. I need a moment. I, I, I got a stitch in my side. Take deep breaths. You got two minutes. Stitch or not, we are moving again. In the distance, Sam could hear gunfire quickly stop. And the night is split with the window goes swim. Noah looks back with widened eyes. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah. A different one, but yes. Sam scans the tree line for any movement. From behind him there was a scream. Slowly he turned around and standing in the stream was a second, smaller one to go. This one was roughly four feet high. Shit! was all Sam could get out before it lunged at him. The Wendigo and Sam hit the stream with a huge splash. Sam screamed as the razor-sharp teeth buried themselves inside his collarbone as the talons tried to open his sides. Water splashed him and entered his lungs as Sam struggled. Blinded and frantic, Sam pulls out his hatchet. He swings it as he bucks, lifting the creature above the waterline. The hatchet digs into the skin and muscle of the small back of the creature. The creature howls in pain and starts to swing its claws, Sam protecting his face with his free arm, sacrificing his forearm as it sliced over and over. During the struggle, Sam repeats the maneuver. This time, when the blade connects, there's a small pop. The window screams and tries to get away by dragging its lower body. Sam rolls over and lunges. He puts his hand in between the shoulder blades and swings the hatchet, burying it in the creature's skull. It instantly becomes still on the bank of the stream. Sam staggers, breathing heavily and bleeding. Noah rushes over to him. You okay? I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. You did the smart thing. You stayed away. Well, I was... Why was that one so much smaller? Someone... Someone cursed starts... Goes out of their original size. The more they eat, the bigger they get. They're starving, they get smaller, and they'll never get smaller than their original size. One time, that was a child. Oh my god. Yeah. Thankfully, that's smaller. That would have turned out differently. Sam says as he rips the sleeve of his shirt and wraps it around his forearm. What do we do? Sam looked around as he grabbed some mud and put it on his shoulder. You have a chance to kill the other one. You have to get to higher ground. Come on, let's go. Sam stands after grabbing his hatchet. Noah follows silently at first and then starts asking questions. Sam? Yeah. You think the creature's Wendigo? What? They call it Wendigo. Oh. You think the Wendigos are together? No. No, I... At one point, they might have been family and no longer. Wendigo aren't part of the natural world. They don't breed. They have no connection to each other. They don't see each other as competition. I reckon the smaller one has been lurking around the larger one, eating whatever scraps left behind, and eventually he'd make a mistake. He wouldn't have been killed by the larger one. 
Oh. Sam? Yeah. You gonna turn into one of them? Sure bit. No, no. Doesn't work that way. It's a curse. You have to eat human flesh for it to take hold. Good. Glad you won't be one of them. Yeah, that makes two of us, Noah. Where are we going? I ground. I have a plan. Sam is interrupted by a scream from the remaining Wendigo. Much closer than Sam hope. Well, move. Yes, sir. Noah said as he picked up the pace. They continued for ten more minutes before the scream from the Wendigo was heard again. By Sam's reasoning, the larger Wendigo just found the smaller one dead on the stream bank. Sam couldn't help but wonder if the creature was angry because Sam had killed it. But because the creature didn't have a chance. They picked up the pace even more now. That was until a shotgun blast ripped through the air and blew the bark off a tree just in front of them. Both he and Noah spun around to see Bob Mitchell standing there with a shotgun leveled at them. I figure this is all your fault. Didn't tell us the whole truth in time. Now all my men are dead. What about the rest? Sam asked. Dead! Except for the preacher. He ran just like you. I watched that thing rip through everyone. Every bullet hole healed instantly as it ate. Hey, kill another man and continue. I barely made it out. You left us to die. I'm fixing to even the score. Sam tilted his head as he heard sounds in the trees. No, you won't. Bob smiled. Yeah, you sure about that? Yeah. You want to kill me? Yeah, let's put that barrel against my chest. You miss, I'll kill you. Don't mind if I do, Bob says walking forward. Glared at Noah. I'll be a hero, boy. Sam nodded. And Noah takes a few steps back. The man puts the barrel against Sam's chest. Have any last words? Yeah, let me ponder this for a moment. But hurry up, we ain't got all night. You don't anyway. You should have treated your wounds. You left a blood trail. Ignorant last words. There was a scream. So close. It was deafening. The Wittigo erupts from the trees. Bob spins around and Sam pushes him in the back, sending him towards the creature as it lunges. Their bodies collide and they hit the ground. Bob screams as his ribcage is torn apart and the Wendigo starts eating the organs that the ribcage was supposed to protect. Sam grabs Noah as they start running on the stream bank. After a few minutes, there's another scream behind them. It's done eating. Move! They start running when they come to a waterfall streaming down a rock face. They're perfect, Sam says as he started to climb, with Noah right behind him. The mist from the falling water made the climb treacherous. Finally, Sam pulled himself up and held out a hand to help Noah get up on the rock itself. Damn it, Sam! What the hell was that? You pushed him right to the creature! Panting and wincing from the pain, blood seeping through his shirt from the wounds on side and shoulder. Sam looked at Noah. You have to trust me, Noah. What I'm doing is the only way we'll get out of this. If these assholes have to die for that to happen, then so be it. Sam. Sam, that ain't right. This ain't right. This ain't about right or wrong. It's about survival. You keep talking about these men are dead men walking, but you never mentioned you or me. I know. I did that for your benefit. There's no guarantee we're going to make it. God's graces will see us until morning. A voice says from a cave where the water is coming out. The preacher walks out from the shadows. God has delivered you to me. Together with God's graces we shall survive. Sam walks to the preacher. Why do you say that? Preacher looked at Sam. God will protect them. Not an answer. All the answer I need. Not answer about a non-entity. Less for me. How can you say that? That creature's proof that God doesn't exist. Or he doesn't care what happens down here. Listen, Sam. I know your brother may have fallen to one of those things. You have it all wrong. I watched my brother become one of those things. So what? Sam kept talking, looking the preacher in the eye. Jeb fell to the curse. The tragedy is the fact that he didn't know he ate human flesh. I watched him turn. I watched him kill the Wendigo that was trying to eat us, but I couldn't just leave my brother. So I, I waited the night out, and I returned the next day. I killed my brother just like Cain killed Abel. What kind of God will allow that? God works in mysterious ways. I don't have an answer for you. In the distance, there was another scream. You know, that thing's howled several times tonight. I can't help but notice each time God hasn't answered. I don't know what to tell you. We are the children of God, pure, protected. And in the end, evil will never conquer us. 
Excuse me. Sam grabbed the preacher by the arm. Tell me, why are you here? Why did they bring you? Case, what they were dealing with was supernatural and evil. Seems they were right. Excuse me, please. Preacher kneels on the outcrop, water rushing against him on the either side. In the moonlight, Sam can see the Wendigo coming towards them. At this point, it was an impossible size, at least nine feet tall and spindly. Sam could see it was struggling to run. The preacher saw it too. He began to pray. Your Heavenly Father, spare us from this evil. We are the humble servants of your word, our pure hearts are a light that warm the souls of the less fortunate. Lord, the savage engines have spread a curse upon our land. Lord, spare us from this native evil so that we can do your bidding. The Wendigo reaches the waterfall and screams before it starts climbing up. Sam slowly walks towards the preacher. Noah grabs his arm. Sam, don't. It's him or us, Noah. No hymns or prayers will help us. The preacher will help us in a more practical way. Lord, Deliver us from this wicked evil brought on this land by the savage Indian. Sam kicked the preacher in the back, sending him over the edge. His body collides with the Wendigo, and they both fall to the water below. The preacher screaming as the Wendigo rips his arm off. Blood spurts from the empty socket. The Wendigo then bites the skull. Even from this height, Sam could hear the cracking of bones. The Wendigo sticks its tongue in the hole of the skull as it keeps biting, and Sam turns around, knowing that he has a few precious moments. He takes off his gun belt and hands it to Noah. Here, hide in the cave. When I say, shoot the creature. Hopefully the bullets are dry now. What are you gonna do? Sam asks as he puts on the gun belt. On the bait. Draw it up here, give you a chance to get a clean shot. There has to be another way, this is suicide. No problem. Listen, Noah. Sam places his hand on the boy's shoulder. Take care of your mom. Don't be like me. Be the man I didn't have the choice to be. No one nods. Yes, sir. Good. Go hide. No one goes inside the cave. Now safe in the shadows, he watches Sam take off his shirt. His back is covered in big, fresh, ugly scars. Sam walks to the edge and kneels at the side of the waterfall. He watches the Wendigo strip the last remaining muscles off the preacher's bones and lick the blood from them. Like before, there's a moment of tranquility that envelops the creature. It's a brief moment. Then its bones start cracking, and it grows some more. Even at the top, Sam can see the muscles and tendons stretch to the point of snapping. The Wendigo screams. Sam does the same. Hey! The creature turns. Its lanky body seems to wave with its movements. It starts to climb the rock next to the waterfall. With great effort, Sam grabs the mud on his shoulder and rips it off. He then sticks his fingers in the wound. Blood starts flowing from it and landing on the Wendigo's face. Sam watches as its tongue shoots out and licks the blood clean in spastic movements. Body's weakness is overcome with frantic hunger. It propels itself upward. Blood flows from the tongue as it seeks it out. As the creature climbs, it gets close enough for Sam to see its black eyes filled with hate and hunger, much like his brother's when he turned. He could hear his last words in his mind. I fear no evil. For I am the shadow of death. Sam pulls back and lets the blood flow and cover the rock edge. He then moves back further. When the creature gets near the edge, Sam pulls out his hatchet and waits. The Wendigo rises over the edge. Its front claws dig in and plant on the ground. Sam takes a deep breath and waits. When one of the back feet is brought up, Sam swings his hatchet. The Wendigo screams as the blade separates the talons from the front claw. Sam swings again and separates the other talons just as the back foot lands on the ground. The moment it does, the creature lunges forward with Sam. They hit the ground when the Wendigo on top. Sam swings the hatchet again, hitting the creature on the side. The Wendigo swings and tries to slice Sam open, but with its talon gone, it only punches him. Bringing the barrage down, Sam hits the Wendigo in the chest with the hatchet. In its weakened state, its upper body rises straight up. Now, Noah! Instead of the thunderous boom, there's an echo of a click. Sam puts his wrapped forearm out, and the Wendigo bites down on it. The bite was strong, but under different circumstances, it could have been much worse. With his free hand, Sam starts punching the creature. There's another echoing click. Sam raises the Wendigo's head up and punches it in the throat, and Sam's arm is spit out as the creature gags. This time, there's a thunderous boom. The creature's head disappears. Finally, a silent moment as the Wendigo's body falls on Sam. He pushes the creature off and lays in the water as it rushes over him. Sam! Sam! Noah screams as he runs over. 
eyes starting to swell and blood in his mouth. Sam can only nod. Noah drags him to the rock wall and puts mud on his wounds. Sam, are you okay? Sam's words are mumbled with the swelling of his face. Yeah, give me a moment. How'd you know? Sam kept his eyes closed as he talked. Next day, I found Jebba. I watched him kill and eat a whole family in their wagon and got stuck in the snow. I, I watched him getting weaker as he ate. If one of these men that died tonight helped us, it was, if it wasn't for them, he would have died. What do you mean? When ago going like us. We eat and work, we get stronger, they get weaker. They don't eat, they get smaller, but stronger. Paradox is part of the curse. Jeb was weak enough, I... I killed him. It's like the night. Sam takes a moment. Started to call her up. Took it back to Ma, I told her, and an old bear got him. Shit, Sam. Yeah. After a while, Sam and Noah started moving. Noah bearing most of Sam's weight as they walked, eventually they made it to Sam's horse, still tied up. Noah sat up front and bared Sam's weight again as Sam sat behind him. Sam rested his head on Noah's shoulder and passed out. By the time they got back to Sam's house, the sun was halfway above the horizon. Sam coughed and put a hand on Noah's shoulder. <coughs> Noah. Yeah. Don't tell anyone what happened to my brother. Why? My ma's old. I, uh, I want to remember Jeb as he was, not what, not what he became. I want to preserve his memory. You have my word, Sam. Thank you. Noah makes a clicking sound, and the horse continues to the cabin, surrounded by early morning mist and wildflowers. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and once again, it's the end of tonight's video, so I want to tell you all thank you for listening or watching however you hear my voice. Whether it be on YouTube or on the podcast, thank you so much for being here with me. There's going to be a new story every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday night right here on YouTube, or if you're not watching on YouTube, that means the podcast gets updated on SoundCloud, Apple, Google Play, and now the podcast is on Spotify. So if it's easier for you guys to listen there than it is to listen on YouTube, then hey, not such a bad deal, right? As always, any support you guys give towards Mr. Creepypasta Storytime really does help me out. I can actually keep the lights on in the house, and I can get nice little cat treats for Hercules. Okay, sorry for taking up so much of your time. Thank you guys for listening once again. And sweet dreams. <laughs>